Hi, it's Miss Winger. I'm here today to give you some information about your Gatsby research paper. There are five sections to this lesson. Since this is on YouTube, everything is identified as a chapter. At the bottom of the YouTube video, you can see the chapter headings and you can bounce between them as you need to. Chapter one, choosing and thinking through your prompt. Your teacher has given you a series of prompts to examine. Take time to really read them, think through them, maybe even print them out and write on them as you're working through them. I've chosen prompt number two. This prompt asks me to examine how social class works in The Great Gatsby. There's two articles linked in it, here and here. In my opinion, I think it's very helpful if you actually print out and write out and maybe even put a prompt in your own words to make sure you really understand it before you begin writing about it. That way you can make sure you answer the question or topics in the prompt. After you've chosen your prompt and worked through it, made sure you really understood it, you want to read the articles. You might want to print these out as well, annotate them, or use them as a PDF on your iPad and annotate them there. Then you get to a point where you need to make a decision. Your teacher has given you the option of using the articles that uh, she or he has provided. So you can think, oh yeah, these articles, these are exactly what I want while I'm working on this paper. I might want to use this one to help prove this argument that I'm thinking about. Or you might think, nope, you know what? I need to find an article that better matches my ideas. If the articles are exactly what you need, stay right here. If you need to do a little more research, jump ahead to chapter three. Chapter two. Your teacher provided those articles as an option to use for your research. You will need to cite them even though they're provided for you. To cite your article, go to zbib.org, enter the link of the article, check to see if it's correct, and edit as necessary. Let me show you what I mean. Here, I'm using a belief in meritocracy. I'm going to highlight the link Go to Zbib, drop the link, click Cite, check it. I can see it's missing an author. It's also missing a date, so I'm going to edit. Go back to the article. There's the author, Clifton Mark. Add the author. Oops, gonna need to fix that. And then I noticed it was missing the publication date. So I go back to the article. Lots of times the publication date isn't where you expect it to see at the top of the article. Here I have to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the article to find it. There it is. So add it to the Zbib. There we go. Click done. Now I've got a bunch of work cited entries. Scroll down to Clifton, oop, Mark. There it is. Mark Clifton. And that's what I want. Great. Chapter three, using database resources. If the articles that your teacher provided don't work for your particular argument, you will need to look at our databases. First thing you need to do is generate some keywords based on the prompt. I recommend making a column of perhaps three different uh, keyword columns, um, three different topics related to your prompt, and using that series of words to help you on your databases. Let me show you what I mean. So if I'm looking at the meritocracy, the, the class prompt, prompt number two, I've got the book, Great Gatsby, the author, characters, a time period. That's sort of one column. And I've got meritocracy, synonym of bootstrap, 
bootstraps or pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, hard work. Then I have class, social hierarchy, social mobility. These three things are things that I can sort of weave together while I'm doing my database, my database searches. Once you have that list, go to our library homepage. And from the library homepage, click on SI databases. You'll get to this page. Notice at the top of the page, there's a link to give you all the passwords. You'll need it for the JSTOR passwords even if you're on campus. The rest of your um, databases will work whether when you're on campus, they'll automatically log in for you. But if you're off campus, you'll need to log in um, with the password. There's two literature-focused databases, EBSCO's Literary Reference Center and Gale's Literature Resource Center. So I recommend those two, the Literary Reference Center and the Resource Center, as great places to go to find accessible articles. The, the information you find there will be relatively easy to read, it'll generate works cited, uh, works cited entry for you, and these two have really similar results. You may actually find the same articles on both of those databases. If you can't find what you're looking for on these two, move on to JSTOR. JSTOR will require you to sign in. Remember the link on the previous page. I recommend advanced search, maybe even using some filters to narrow your results. It also will generate your works cited entry. The sources there will be deeply researched, they'll be unique, they won't sound just like what you find over at these two. Now I know you're very familiar with uh, searching on these databases because you've used Gale before and EBSCO is very similar to Gale. So I'm going to give you a brief um, example of how I would search using my um, keywords that I generated on JSTOR. So I go to JSTOR, make sure I sign in, click Advanced Search, and I'm going to put in a word from each of my three columns. So I've got the title, let me put in bootstraps, relating to meritocracy and just economic. Okay, I want to make sure everything's in English and see what I get with this. Not too many results to sift through. You can scroll through, look at the titles, look at the brief description, see if it'll work for me. I'm going to choose this top one. It might be helpful. You can page through it. I also want you to notice that there are recommended sources on the left-hand side that may help you out. Gatsby False Prophet of the American Dream might be helpful for you. You can click the citation button, copy the MLA works cited entry, and drop it in your works cited document. Chapter four, whether or not you are using an article you found on your, in your own research or an article that your teacher has provided for you, you will need to cite Gatsby and add a works cited entry to your works cited for Gatsby. It's easy to do. Go to zbib.org and enter the ISBN. It'll give you a correct works cited entry. Great Gatsby's ISBN is 9780 7432-73565. That's it. Super easy. Chapter 5. Now you've got your research done. You've got your works cited entries created. You've got to make sure your parenthetical citations correlate to your works cited entries. You've got two sources, at least the article and the book. Maybe you have more. And I know in past writing about literature in your English class, you may not have needed to add a work cited for the, the literary text that you're using, but it's really important when you're using more than one source to make sure you've got a, works, a list of the works, the multiple works that you cited. And I'm going to say it again, you've heard me say it before, whether you quote or paraphrase, you must cite. So let's look at this together. I've got the work cited here on this side and a sentence from my essay here on the right. 
My two sources are the book and the article by Mar uh, Clifton Mark. Notice my parenthetical citation matches up with the author's last name and the page number for the book. Printed works need that page number. The online works, since they don't have pages, don't need the page number. And here, for my parenthetical citation from Mark, Clifton Mark, I've got the last name in the parentheses there. I've incorporated both sources into one sentence, so I need to make sure that source one, this parenthetical citation, parenthetical citation is at the very end of the information from the book and this is at the very end of the information from the article. In this part I mixed a quote and a paraphrase. Remember what to put in the parenthetical citation It's that first piece of information that you find in that hanging indent on the work cited. That should be all the information you need to complete this project. You can always shoot me an email and Ms. Francoli or I will, will respond when you write to si underscore librarians at siprep.org. Or stop by and see either of us and we can help you out. And you can even use live chat during library hours from the library homepage. We look forward to helping you. It's always a pleasure working with our students.